In this lesson, we're going to check out the uh, Adafruit Motor Shield, which is a really cool way of controlling motors. Okay, for this project, we'll be using the Arduino and breadboard, as usual, as well as the charging cable. Uh, we'll, of course, we're focusing on this motor shield, um, and I'll flash up the URL so you can get your own. Um, and uh, along with it, we're going to be using DC motor, a servo, and a stepper. Um, along with uh, some jumpers. Okay, so we're talking about the motor shield. This is it right here. Um, and here are a couple other shields. I'll talk about them in a second. But what it is essentially is a circuit board with some components on it and then some pins that plug into the female headers on the Arduino. So you're basically adding on capabilities onto the Arduino. And sometimes you can stack them up, like a whole bunch of them on top of each other. Um, however, uh, oftentimes um, you cannot. Uh, well, let's talk about this one. This is the Bricktronic Shield. It lets you control Lego robotics using your Arduino instead. And it has, um, it has some plugs for uh, sensors and a couple plugs for motors. And so Instead of using Mindstorm's proprietary microcontroller brick, you can use your Arduino. This is a simple relay shield. It, it lets you uh, control this relay, which is kind of like a switch for high voltage. If you have a high voltage project and you, you know, understandably don't want to be uh, handling it, that's, you use a, a, a relay to do it. And then this is the motor shield, and this is uh, we're going to be using this for projects. It's pretty cool. Uh, basically, you have these two sets of connectors on either side, and each of them controls either one stepper motor or two DC motors. So um, the two of them together are a total of two steppers or four DC. Um, and then uh, right here, you can control two, um, two, two uh, servos. So um, you could you could theoretically control up to six motors with this. Pretty cool. Um, and again, you just plug it right into the Arduino using these pins, these pins right there. And lastly, you have the uh, this this power connection here. One of the problems with the Arduino uh, controlling a bunch of motors is it doesn't have enough juice for all of them, so you end up all your motors running really slow. And this way, you can you can um, supply enough voltage for all of your motors. And a lot, and you're probably wondering um, why you would need a shield in the first place because we have done projects where we control these um, these motors directly using the um, the Arduino with no shield. And the reason is um, all of those motors use a ton of pins, and this way. Um, you can you can control a bunch of things without all of your pins being used up, as well as the power issue that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Okay, rather than the usual um, wiring uh, lesson, I just went ahead and did it anyway. And I'm going to tell you what I did. All right, so let's start with power. I just have a DC mo um, nine volt right here, and it's plugged into here. Um, and this green LED comes on when you do have an external power source. Um, and then uh, the uh, I have DC motors plugged in over here on M1 and M2. Uh, although the M1 ones are not running, um, but that's just because of the code. The, the sketch, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, just stipulates that only one DC motor be attached. But I attach two... Um, but one's just not going. Uh, I have a stepper right here. I mean a servo uh, plugging in over here. And then a stepper plugging in here. Unfortunately, the pins um, for the stepper do not match these over here, so you have to use jumpers. Kind of inconvenient, but... Um, so that's kind of how it works. A lot of you are probably wondering, why bother with a, a motor shield? Um, you know, can't the Arduino control a stepper, a servo, and a DC motor perfectly well? We just saw that. 
Well, yes and no. Um, for one thing, you have a certain number of pins to access on the Arduino, and you can't necessarily um, spare enough pins to control multiple motors, especially like a stepper, which uses four. Um, secondly, uh, this, uh, this board has these two motor control chips that allow much more precise control, including for DC motors reversing. So basically, you have a terminal block here that can control either one stepper or two DC motors. You have another one right here, so you can control two steppers. Um, and then right here it, uh, are header pins for um, two steppers, uh, I mean servos. And then, so you can control either four uh, DC motors or two um, steppers and then you can also control two servos so this is a really great board and also you know power is a concern you can you can wire in your power right here so you have enough juice for all of the motors in your project one last thing you should know about the Adafruit motor shield is that there's a new version out there it basically operates the same way as I understand it it except instead of having um, big old chips it has really small surface mount chips so there's more room um, for extra things like um, if you see in the photo that there's some um, holes for like prototyping adding a, a sensor or something to it um, but there's one area where it's super 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 cool and that is it's stackable so you could theoretically have um, perhaps dozens of motor shields stacked on top of a single Arduino and be able to use all of their um, all of their motors. Okay, before we program the motor shield, we're going to need to download its library. Um, you can find that on learn.adafruit.com slash adafruit dash motor dash shield. And one of the options is library install. So basically, um, go to uh, oh, it looks like you could just click on it and it and it downloads it so to download the um, the library uncompress it uh, make sure that um, that uh, the inside the folder are those two files um, rename the uncompressed folder AF motor and then place it inside your Arduino sketch folder um, that uh, I mean your um, your libraries folder that we had previously added um, another library to early on uh, in this series of tutorials. So um, follow the directions, install, it, and then we'll get started. Okay, having loaded the library into the correct folder and restarting Arduino, let's go into the examples and find. Um, a sketch to try out. Let's do motor party. Motor party is the um, is the sketch that I used to demonstrate the motors a second ago and basically it waggles steppers, servos, and or DC motors back and forth to show, show them off. And it's currently set up for a DC motor in port M2 on the shield, a servo um, on servo port 1, and a stepper on um, ports M3 and M4. Um, so uh, as you might recall from when we checked out servos, it needs to attach the servo according to the servo library which if you look at the beginning is one of the two libraries specified of course its own library AF motor is one and so the rest of the sketch is a loop that um, uh, waggles the the DC motor the servo and the stepper back and forth just to show them off okay what else can you do with the the motor shield library. Well, let's go check out some more examples. Um, this one, AF motor constant speed, 
basically um, plays around with a stepper and um, basically gives you complete control over the stepper much more much more robustly than an Arduino itself can. It's, it's, it's much simplified. Let's see what else. Multi-stepper um, gives you control over two steppers. That's one of the great things about this, this shield is it can control a whole bunch of motors. Um, stepper test again gives you uh, helps you uh, take control of a stepper. Um, and motor test controls a DC motor and shows you how to do that. You know, doing reversing and setting a specified speed and so on. So basically, uh, it, it this um, the the motor shield library is it, it focuses mostly on steppers and DC motors because uh, it it makes use of the servo library to control servos. So it's it's not as robust in that category. But you can just go to the servo library and control the same way. The only thing you have to do is make sure you get the pins right. So that's it for series four. You know, we had lots of fun with motors, but it's time to move on to sensors, and that's what we're going to cover in series five. Thanks for watching.